Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. I want to talk about silver today. Gold is super important for just about any portfolio, but let's not forget about silver. Sometimes people ignore it, and you really shouldn't. I think it has a lot of upside right now, upside potential, I should say. Now, this is not a sponsored or promotional video. This is just how I'm feeling and thinking about silver right now. And I really want you to get in the habit, and I've mentioned this so many times, get in the habit of watching the gold to silver ratio. Not enough people watch this. Uh, what is the gold to silver ratio? Uh, imagine uh, how many bars of silver, one ounce bars of silver, would it take to equal the value of a one ounce bar of gold, all right? Uh, or if you want the formula, it's the current price of an ounce of gold divided by the current price of an ounce of silver, all right? So right now it's very high, the gold to silver ratio. As I'm making this video, it's 91. So imagine in your head right now that it would take 91 one ounce bars of silver to equal the value of a one ounce bar of gold. Uh, imagine a big pile of 91 silver bars <laughs> just to equal the value of one gold bar, one ounce. So yeah, that's uh, what that tells me is that gold is much more expensive than silver. That doesn't mean that you don't want to own gold but it means you might want to own some silver uh, because this is usually around 60. I've heard other people say 50. Uh, I've heard different averages for the gold to silver ratio, but uh, most commonly I've heard 60 or thereabouts. Uh, and according to goldsilver.com, and I want to give them credit for this website, uh, when the gold to silver ratio tops 80, goes above 80, uh, this has a, uh, historically signaled a time when silver was relatively inexpensive relative to gold. Silver went on to rally 40%, 300%, and 400% the last three times this happened. And so now it's definitely above 80. In fact, it's above 90 as I'm making this video. Does that necessarily mean that silver is going to go up 40% or 300% or 400%? No. There are no guarantees, but this looks really good for silver. So you can own both, but maybe allocate a little bit more towards silver right now if you want to. And here is the silver chart from Yahoo Finance. Yeah, it's down, okay? And that doesn't mean that gold isn't also down as well. And I like to buy when things that I like, assets that I like, go down a lot. And Gold has gone down, but silver has really gone down quite a bit from, well, up here at the peak, uh, about 27 down to 18 and change. That is quite a discount for silver right now. Looking really good. And you can play this through the mining shares, silver miners, and I've talked about those plenty of times. Lots of really good silver miners out there, along with the bars, the coins, you know, the bullion for silver as well. So what's causing this? Uh, well, more than anything else, probably, I'd say, do you know what this chart is? <laughs> it is the dollar, the, uh, the U.S. dollar, and the dollar just has been uh, strong for the past year, really the past half year. It was kind of drifting sideways, and then over the past uh, six, seven, eight months or so, it just went up, up, and away, the dollar, which is not the normal state of affairs for fiat currency. Normally, fiat currencies go down, down, down over time. And I don't expect the, dollar, uh, the dollar's value to just continue going up. This just means that it's strong relative to other world currencies. That's all. And so it's been described as the uh, cleanest shirt in a hamper full of dirty shirts. Okay, <laughs> so if all the other fiat currencies are uh, worse than the dollar, that's all this means, all right? They're all bad, but this is a little bit better, the dollar. And so when the dollar has a massive rally like this, short-term rally, uh, I say short-term, I know a year or six months or whatever might seem long-term, but in the grand scheme of things, this is really just a pop. It's just a short-term rally. And when this happens, yeah, that puts negative pressure on uh, silver and gold. But silver tends to magnify the move compared to gold. The silver price tends to move up and down faster usually than gold. And so it hit uh, silver kind of hard. And that's just the short-term thinking. That doesn't mean that's going to continue to happen. doesn't mean that the dollar is just going to keep on going up and up and up like this. Uh, that's not a normal constant state of affairs for the dollar. 
Uh, and so here's another look at the dollar. And yes, the dollar's price is up uh, compared to other fiat currencies, world currencies. But then the RSI has a divergence here, RSI down, uh, when we connect these two uh, peaks here. So RSI divergences can be pretty useful sometimes. No guarantees, they don't always work, but this uh, could be an indication that the dollar might start to roll over. And here's a chart for silver that I found pretty useful. Hopefully you can read this. I know it might be a little small. Uh, but you have accumulation. The accumulation distribution line is outperforming the price, which is positive, looking good for silver. Uh, and then they wrote the breakdown by silver at the start of the month may have been a downslide head fake that caused a lot of longs to bail. Yeah, uh, sometimes you get just people, their stop losses get hit and they just, you know, they leave the trade, they exit the, exit the trade for silver or silver futures, really. Um, so the breakdown below support, which was in large part due to the exceptional dollar index strength we just talked about, it's not the end of the world. For silver. Uh, silver has arrived at another significant support zone here, as you can see in yellow, that could turn it higher, although we'll now have to face resistance on the way back up. So be aware of that. Uh, former support can become resistance, uh, but that wouldn't be until it gets up to, let's say, 21 and a half, something like that. So uh, you should be able to get some, hopefully, uh, upside potential out of it. Uh, before it might meet this resistance zone over here. All right, so, and new lows not confirmed by momentum in the MACD, another indicator here. So if the MACD uh, has, you know, an upward trend over time, uh, if we connect these lows here, uh, so you've got a divergence there as well, along with this divergence in the dollar. And if you believe in divergences for technical indicators, this could be very powerful. Both of these could be very powerful. So. Pay attention to the gold to silver ratio. Watch that. And uh, if you want to scale into silver, you don't have to put everything in all, in, all at once. I want to talk about scaling in uh, because you could be wrong, and I could be wrong at first. The dollar could continue to show strength, could continue to go up, then that might put more pressure negatively on silver. And so you don't have to put everything in all, in all at once and think long term. All right. You're not just trying to see what happens today and try to profit tomorrow or the day after or next week. If you think longer term, because that's what these charts are, then you could do really well with silver. Silver has been as high as around 50 at one point, and uh, now it's less than $19 per ounce and really, really cheap, especially compared to gold. All right, but you can own both. That's fine. All right, so uh, stay safe. Don't put it all in at once. Scale in if you want to take a position. And no guarantees, but I'm looking at this and I'm thinking it's really good right now for silver. So thank you so much for watching and listening. I will talk to you again soon.